Welcome legends, welcome to the Procreate Animation Morph tutorial. I'm so excited to be here with you guys live and this is what we're going to look at and create today, today together. So this is a short awesome teapot or a teacup to teapot animation all the way around. This was heavily inspired by Dries Lambrecht, uh, a designer from Belgium who created this but here is a little note. This was created in a 3D program such as Cinema 4D. And uh, we're gonna start with a simplified version, just a back and forth from one object to another. And we're actually going to go really simplified by doing a sketch version for that. So what we'll cover today is a short, well, relatively short uh, animation tutorial. So we're gonna start with a canvas setup, the animation itself, then adding some extra effects and then export and share everything. So what you'll need today is an iPad with an Apple Pen and Procreate. So if you have that already set up like me here, I have everything ready for, for us to get started and I can't wait to start with you guys. So why don't we start and let's animate something together. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to start with an animation canvas setup. To create this canvas setup, well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to open Procreate. Um, you're going to tap on the plus at the top right corner, then select screen size and hopefully go for anything that has at least 100 plus layers. So depending on what iPad you're using, uh, this could be a smaller canvas size. So maybe something like 600 times 800 pixels. Maybe you wanna go for something larger. If you have an iPad Pro or like the latest gen, then you can go with a hard canvas. Procreate has limits on layers and that's why we need to take this into account. Whenever you're creating a ca custom canvas, for example, you will see exactly the number of layers that you have enabled. And if you're not really sure, well, let's dive in deeper here. So in here on the iPad, what I can do is go onto the wrench tool. That's this one here. Go onto the canvas and then at the bottom canvas information. This is where I can find out everything about my canvas. And so here I go to layers and then I see maximum layers, 183 layers used, 168 uh, available only 15 and you'll see this is something that will come through regularly. So just to quickly recap what we went through, um, we just want to see exactly what we need. And so just go to create a new canvas, tap on the plus, select screen size or any uh, layer size that fits for you and just shoot for anything that has 100 plus layers. Then once you have that open, you want to turn on the animation assist by tapping on the wrench tool go to tap canvas and then you want to turn on the animation assist toggle and then what you will do or have done is you'll be automatically in the uh, setup so if i quickly do this on here so i have my ipad i tap on screen size that will open up a brand new canvas and then wrench tool here animation assist and I'll turn this one on. I'm already in the right element, so that's going to be good. Now, I hope you guys are all following quite quickly with me, and uh, then as soon as we're in here, we're ready to get started with our animation. So here's how we're going to do our animation step by step. We're gonna first do a drawing, so we're gonna draw the rim of the cup, then we're gonna move that up and down and animate that, and then we're gonna draw our cup and pot shape, um, and then we're going to, again, morph between these shapes and create these in-between movements. We're gonna draw out the handles and the spout of the pot, and then finally animating that rotation. So if you've caught on, we're always doing two things. We're drawing something, we're animating it, we're drawing something to add on to that animation. We're animating it, we're drawing and animating. So we're going and switching back and forth. That's pretty much how we're creating this movement. And since we're doing this sketch, the goal of doing this sketch is so that you can learn this movement quickly. And then afterwards, you can always add so much more uh, stylized elements. You can create this and turn this cup into what Ever you want it to look like and I'll show you some student awesome student examples from my own students because I taught this very session beforehand in my animation boot camp uh, this was part three or part of the session three in my boot camp and so some of my students might be here so if you are here from my boot camp uh, please wave and just say hi from the animation legends 
Now, we're saying here, we have these six steps to go through. So let's start by drawing the rim of the cup, which is step number one. So to do that, all we're really going to do is to draw a simple ellipse. And we're going to hold down to create a quick shape and make sure that it is correctly in position. Then we want to place that into the center of the frame. Now, if that was a little bit quick or if that was too much, let's do it together uh, step by step. So I'm here in my canvas. I'm going to select a black color and I'm going to use any brush that I want. For example, I like to use the pencil brush because that one is easy. And I'm going to draw here pretty much at the center of the frame. Doesn't have to be perfectly at the center here, drawing this and then I'm holding it down. Now, as I'm holding it down, it will create this quick shape, which is exactly what I want. And if I hold my finger down, now it will lock into specific positions. I don't want it too big, so I'm just going to place it here. And if I zoom in, I see that I have a little part here missing. That's totally fine. It's gonna be okay. And once we have that going, it's going to be ready to move in place further. I want to place this one at the center of my frame, especially on this center. I don't necessarily need to have that on the vertical center. So here I'm going to tap on the transform tool. That's that cursor part right here. And I'm going to go to snapping, which is down here at the bottom, all the way to the left. You'll see like a flash that says snapping. And then I want to turn on snapping. So we have magnetics and snapping. I'll turn on snapping. And now I can move this here and you'll see I have a orange line at the top and here in the right. Um, so perfectly like this. And I just want to position it right at the center. So that here, you'll see, it will magnetically hold on to that line. This is the line I'm looking for. And then I can let go. This is going to be the cup that I'm using. And this is what we're going to start off with. It was super simple, just drawing an ellipse placing, holding down to make a quick shape so it's a perfect circle or perfect ellipse, and then holding down the finger just to snap that into the right position so it's not crooked, it's not off, it's just perfectly centered as is, and we positioned it. That was a quick recap of what we did in step number one. So in step number two, we're going to move this rim up and down. Now, that sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually going to be quite easy. So when we're moving this up and down, that's the movement that we're going for. Uh, we're going to start first by planning out the movement. So before you even start moving anything, unless you are a seasoned artist or animator, then you want to plan your movement ahead to just get that right. How to do that? Well, we start by drawing a direction line. That direction line will start anywhere from the first rim that we drew. And I'm going to use a blue line for that. And then we're going to add frame step. Now how we position these, position these frame sets, steps is going to be very important because that's going to determine how fast something is moving and at what speed. We're going to want to increase the steps all the time more and more and then kind of like slow it down again towards the end. So that's why at the beginning they're not spaced apart that much but at towards the end or towards the middle that's where they're going to be uh, spaced apart the most and then we're doing the opposite, kind of like a mirror effect at the end. And so it will speed up and then slow down as it comes back up. And so that's kind of the movement that we're going for. And we're planning that with these frame steps that we're creating with these red lines. Finally, we're going to add that exact line onto the foreground. So we always have that on the top. It's not going to be hidden somewhere behind because once you are in the frame by frame animation, you will want to have that always on the top. And how to do that? Well, it's actually fairly simple. You tap on the frame and then you will turn on foreground. You'll have that selection if that frame is all the way to the right or if there's no other layer. We're gonna see and look at that exactly. So let's start by adding this line and adding those steps. So to do that, let's dive in here into our Procreate canvas now i'm going to add a brand new layer on top here you can also just add a frame down here whichever you want and i'm going to select a blue color now while i'm in here i'm going to draw up a line here i might not go too high up so this is my line that i'm drawing uh, you can actually use a different brush if that's going to be more helpful i just want it to be very visual and once i have that i will select a red color so this is the direction line it's moving this way up and now i'm adding the frame steps so the frame steps here start at the bottom and the next one is very close 
One thing I might have forgotten to add, we usually start with an anticipation move. In animation, that's something that's really important to make something look a lot better. So instead of going forward, the very first step here, frame is going to actually move backwards and then it's moving upwards. So it might look counterintuitive, but just go with that. It's going to look great. So we have the first one now. So this is the first, this is zero, this is one, this is two. And now I'm increasing here to three and then four, maybe less. Maybe I'm just adding kind of like this distance between these two on top here. So this might be four. And then here in the middle, that will be five. So that's the fastest. And then it's slowing down here and then kind of slowing down maybe dramatically like this, 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 this. And then here that might be our overshoot that's going on top. So my goal is to spread these apart in different um, velocities. So kind of like if we looked at the speed from one direction, it would kind of look like this. So it speeds up and it's fast. And actually here, that's kind of like where it's the fastest. And then it slows down again, turning back to zero. And so that's what we're adding. And so right now, all you have to do is to go with that. That's kind of going to be helpful. Now, as we finish all of these steps, what I will do here, I'm just going to erase that because that's not necessary. And I'm going to kind of make this pointy. So I know that that's the overshoot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven frames will be needed. Now, this here, this line. So if I go back, this is my rim, this is my line. On this one, I'll tap on and you'll see the option down at the below uh, at down at the bottom. Down at the bottom, you'll see the foreground option, which you can then toggle on. So that's going to be right here. Now, now we have this we can start moving our frame throughout the picture. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to move our frame throughout the picture and creating all these different steps that we've added in here. If you want to kind of like frame hold just to see kind of like the steps that we've added, you can do that. I'm just going to get it, go ahead with what I have right here. So let's start by duplicating here this frame. So this is my second frame and I can tap on the cursor to move that and I'm going to first move it down. Now this is the first frame. Now the second frame duplicate again, and now I can move this up to the third position and keep on repeating this fourth position here. I'm actually going a little bit further. Um, you will see because the space between back here, that's the first one. The second one is a little bit longer. So I'm just adding a little bit of space in here. So I'm just adjusting uh, as I'm going and here, the next one moving further and I'm trying to keep this here. This is the position. And what I definitely want to do is I want to make sure that all of these are in the same direction. So the next time I move this, so duplicate this again, when I hit the cursor, instead of doing snapping, which is fine with me as well, you can also use magnetic. Uh, so in this case, it will always move in the same direction here. So perfect. That's to the next red frame stop. And I'll keep repeating this maybe a little bit quicker, just like that. If any time it goes too fast, you can always pause, just catch up and then keep on going so that we don't waste anyone's time here because that's definitely not something I would want. So here we go. One last. And then I'm just moving this back into position. Finally, right here. And once we have all of these, I'm going to add here a hold frame. So tap on the frame, the very first frame, and then just turn that to one. That will create kind of like a blind copy. Um, and then I'm going to go to all the way to the back and hit one as well. And so tap on the layer and then hold frame duration, just one frame and in settings. Now this is going to be the interesting part in settings. We have these different looping options, so it can loop all around or it can do a ping pong. Ping pong is great because it goes from the beginning to the end and then back again. And so this will be perfect to show that. So settings, ping pong, that's all you need to do. And then you can hit play and then your animation should beautifully go up, pause, go down, pause, and then go up again. And so you can kind of like extend that pause a little bit longer just if you want to. So for example, here, let's move that to two. That was three here and at the beginning as well from one to two. And let's play this back. So that is our very first movement that we're adding 
and that's a beautiful up and down movement of our cup rim which we've designed right here so that is the very first two steps that we've already created. So let's just have a quick look at here. So here, that's exactly what we should end up with. And that's all we need to do in step two, moving that rim up and down. In step three, we're going to actually start by drawing out the cup and the pot shape. So we're taking up the very first frame and the very last frame, and we're drawing out a beautiful uh, two shapes. They're not going to be very complex. We're not adding the handles yet. That's something that we're going to keep all the way till the end. So starting off with our cup shape, I'm going to start with the very first one. Actually, one more thing. Um, if you're in here, you wanna turn on the drawing guide. The drawing guide is going to help us to create beautiful symmetrical shapes. So in the drawing guide or start by tapping on the wrench tool, then you tap on canvas. And since we are, should already all be in canvas, tap on or turn on drawing guide and then tap on edit drawing guide. Now, once you have done these steps, so wrench tool, canvas, turn on drawing guide and then edit drawing guide, you should be in a different menu and you should be able to select this right uh, bottom or the button on the right where you can tap on symmetry, uh, which is going to be perfect. So this is what we're going to do in step number three. So let's have a like a live demonstration. So I'm here in my very first one. I'm just going to turn on here, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and then tap on symmetry. Now the symmetry is perfectly added. I don't need this, um, this lines anymore. So what I can do here, like the up and down movement, um, I'll need it later, but I'll show you when. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer, but I'm going to select those two layers and place them together. So group, and that will create two layers that I have now in here. And that's going to be my very first layer. So I'm just putting back these two frame option and I'm making sure that I'm in the empty layer. Now in the empty layer, I'm going to tap on that layer and I'm going to tap on drawing assist. Now, at the bottom of your layer, you'll see that it says assisted, and that's going to be important because you'll see this exactly why. Now that I am going back to my black color and my pencil, I'm going to draw out here a line of the cup. And just like that, I have a beautiful cup. Now, you can do this over and over again. Sometimes if you're a perfectionist, you wanna get that perfectly right. I'm actually really happy with what happened just here, so I'm just gonna leave this at that and that's going to be perfectly fine for what I need right now in this situation. So this is our coffee cup or a tea cup actually, and we're moving all the way to the top and in this one here, so actually not the grayed out, just the plain visible layer here. And in here as well, I'm going to add a layer and then group these two together. And then on that layer that is empty, I'm going to hit drawing assist. Now with that, I can see here at the bottom, this should be an onion skin, barely visible. So it's not that perfect or great, but I can see here, this is where it's starting. So this is where my, my bottom of the teapot should start. And here I'm just going to add a nice line. And so this is a little bit harder than I anticipated. So here, this is the first part. And now here, the second, just trying to round that up as best as I can and you'll see this looks great. Now we have our teapot form and shape and we have our coffee cup shape. And now they're going to switch from one end to the other and how we're going to do this. Well, that's going to be in step number four, which is pretty much the topic of today, morphing between shapes. So morphing between shapes is really a simple term. You gotta imagine that you have one shape that just transformed by shape shifting all of its element into another shape form uh, without actually having a cut, without changing too much, but just really everything starts to form together. Now, these two elements that we have right here, um, here with the teacup and of course the teapot, well, those are not that different, but they change in size and shape. And so we want to make sure that it looks similar. To do that, well, we're going to go back to our direction line plus our steps that we've added in between. This is going to be actually a very helpful tool because we can place these in between our two shapes and that will kind of show us exactly where the line will have to go through. So sounds super simple. It also is very simple. It takes a little bit more finesse to draw out all of these lines, 
but once you're in it, you'll see it's actually quite easy. So let's have a look. So I'm going to take here this shape. I'm actually duplicating this a couple of times, grouping these into one. And you'll see as soon as you group layers together, they form back one single frame, which is going to be very great. So in this case here, I'm going to select this one end, and then I can kind of like scale it down. And then here, try to place it from one point to another. Here, maybe turn off the magnetic and here place these wherever I need to. Now you can also just transform those. And so here I can duplicate that again, move that and then place it somewhere else like here. And you'll see it's, it won't be perfect, but it will be or do the job pretty well. So if I go back now to my first frame, so here the, the rim goes down. So this is where I going to where I'm going to start adding like frames. So adding frame, tap on the drawing assist, and I will group these two. Now I can do a little bit of uh, work beforehand. So one of the things that I love to do is kind of like prepare in advance. So I will need this layer for all of these up till the end. So what I can do is just duplicate that layer, place that onto here this one, and if I hold it down, you'll see this. If I zoom in here and then hold it down, you'll see that there's a blue um, uh, outline on that layer and that will put these two layers in one so I don't actually have to tap on group, which is perfectly great. And so I can just do this a couple of times here, repeat this, and that will actually simplify my work later. I don't have to go into the menu again and again. And here, place that inside. Three more to go. This is a little bit of a repetitive work, which is fine. While you're doing all these repetitions, this is, what is why doing animation is so great, is because you actually get to be really fast in Procreate and understand how this tool works and just like you'll get the, the hang of it really fast. So now we're in here and I'm going to go back to my pencil and I'm going to draw out here this line. And since first rim is going down, one thing that I definitely want to do is actually push out the form a tiny little bit just because it's pushing down and so it pushes out a little bit here and I'm keep and I keep going into that direction so we're here the next frame will be very similar and I'm just trying not to move too much so again just trying to be a little bit outside of the line that I just drew and you can see because we have drawing assist, it will automatically do the other side automatically with that. And so in here, if I tap now on that layer, it will ask me which layer do I want to work on. So I tap on the empty one, and now I can kind of like go just a little bit outside of that line. So not too much because the bigger jumps are coming in. And here, so it's already changing shape. Let's do that again. Just like that and let's repeat this so this is where actually the bigger jump are happening so here this is where I can do a bigger jump here as well and so I keep on repeating this select the right layer And you really want to make sure that at some point here it does connect well. So maybe I'm zooming in a tiny little bit more. Now the smoother the consecutive lines you're drawing look, the better this will look like. And so here I probably will want to get a little bit closer to the other shape like this. And then there's, I think, two more. Two more lines here to draw. So this is already very close to the finish line and just closing in that line and then the final one should be already there. So if I play that back, you can see we've created all these different lines in between and using kind of like this distance here, we kind of see and know where we have to go through, which is kind of like helpful. Um, it's not perfect, but that's kind of like how it works really well. And so this is where you should get at by drawing out these lines. So having all these layers in drawing assist 
especially later if you go and create something more complex with more illustration like more um, refined illustrations not just a sketch then that will actually play a role on how you create all these different elements in between so this was step number four morphing between shapes and we have created all of these lines in between to create this beautiful shape shifting uh, cup to pot which is the first big step which we have created. Now, there are only two more steps left in this series of animating our coffee cup to teapot. And the last step is really just drawing out the handles and the spouts, which pretty much looks like this. So this is kind of the more maybe refined version of that, but you can do it however you like. You will want to have a, like a cup handle at the left, or at the right it doesn't really matter which way you're going to, um, about it but here we go we have our last image here so this is where now i'm going to add a new layer so this is where i'm going to add the spout so on the teapot so here i can basically just draw out something kind of like this and then have here you know even though i've drawn this so many times i still struggle how to draw those really well. Um, and if you do struggle like me sometimes, you can just go and look up some inspiration on how to draw out these, uh, these spouts for those tea pots. Uh, but that here, that looks pretty fine. And the last one here is, I usually start with the inner rim. That's going to be more helpful. And then here, the outer rim like this. And then once we're done, we can erase a couple of lines here and there just to get it right. Um, but that's pretty much how I would start with the very first one. So we created the handle and the spout for the pot. And we're going back to the very first one where we're just going to create the handle. And since sometimes that actually helps me here is to draw out. Uh, actually, I want to add a new here layer. So if I'm inside, perfect. There we go. So drawing in the inner one and now the outer one. Somehow I'm having a really tough time right now. Like this. Oh, it doesn't work because I'm on the wrong layer. See, this is good to check out. Make sure that you are on the right layer, just like that. Maybe just give that a little bit more. There we go. I think that's fine. That is looking fine to get our coffee handle. So this is our tea cup handle. And then we have our here teapot handle, which is also fine. If I wanted to change or transform something, I could also use here the liquify tool and then kind of push back just some elements here. Maybe just push this to get a nicer handle. But that's for me, for this exercise right here, that's going to be fine. Now I can hide everything else. And we have the first part, the last part. And now the question is, how do we do everything in between? So let's look at our last step, which is animating the rotation movement. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the handle from the right side and I want to turn everything around making or giving the illusion that our teacup is actually rotating around all the way and then transforming kind of like this spiral effect into this teapot. Um, and so we're using this rotation to kind of like tell the story because it's an illusion that we're creating with these drawn images. And so this is why this will look pretty great. And one thing that we need to account for is that not everything is seen. So once the handle goes behind it, which part do we actually see? For that, I have created this top view uh, of this coffee cup or this tea cup. And what you can do, you have this hidden area that we do not see. And so if I play this back in an animated form, you'll see that it goes from one side to the other and it will cut off some elements of the handle. Now, understanding that is going to be very important because here I will add kind of like this rotation in one hand and then from the other side, I'll do the opposite going backwards. So turning from right to left. So there are two movements that I want to do. The first one going this direction. So imagine here, I'm here. This is 
I have no idea how I'm doing this. So if I'm here with the handle and then I'm going returning back and then with the spout on this side, I'm turning on back this way to make it disappear. So these are the couple of movements that I need to account for. So let's have a look at how that can be actually achieved. I've done this now a couple of times. I think I know how to do it well. So here's the first one. And since we've created this on a separate layer, this is going to be very helpful because I can just duplicate this and I can move this into the next frame. Now the very first frame is an anticipation movement. That means that we're going the opposite direction of which we're going afterwards. So instead of going behind the cup, it's actually coming closer, which means that I want to move it just a tiny little bit closer to me here. And also kind of like giving the illusion using free form, I'm taking up this here, holding down that nod, and then just pulling it a little bit closer. That way it will look like it's going a little bit like this in that direction. And so that's the very first thing that I'm doing. Now you'll see that I have a couple of lines. Probably what I would want to do is here, give that illusion that it's actually coming over to this side and then I'll erase everything else. But since we're just practicing right now here, this is kind of the first movement that I'm doing and I'm not adding these elements. The second one, now that it come forward, it will go behind it a little bit further and I'm just turning on the onion skin frames here. So now I can see this is a beautiful element that I see how it's moving and it's moving backwards. So we're going to duplicate that one more time. We're moving this into the next group. So it's going to be in the next frame and we're going to hit the transform tool again. This time I'm going to select that nod and I'm going to move it in this way and a little bit stronger than before. Plus I'm moving it a little bit higher up than the very first frame, which I can see here. And so that will already give the illusion that it's behind the cup since it's moving this direction now. So here I can probably start erasing some parts just like that. And I'm going to repeat this one more time, duplicate, adding that to the next frame here. And now since that one moved up a little bit more, I'm just placing that here. Plus I'm placing it further behind, moving that again in this direction. And just like that, here erasing all of the rest. Let's erase a little bit quicker here with this bigger eraser brush. And just like that, you can see kind of like how the handle starts to move behind. So that's pretty much the trick is to one, pull it forward to make it look like it's coming forward. This is where I can now start to erase a couple of these lines here that will actually make this trick look so much better. So I'm going back to that handle here, adding these lines in here and erasing just that little part there. So from this to this, now the handle looks like it's coming forward and it's going behind and then it will be hidden behind as it comes around here. And so I don't know exactly where I need to start. So I'm going to do the opposite way from the start here. So first one, taking the spout and I am taking this into the next frame. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to have to select the first parts here. So selection, freehand, selecting here, just the spout. And I'm going to have that turn into our direction again, because it's the opposite. So it's coming in. And so like this over here, placing it a little bit further down. And then I'm going to duplicate. Well, I should also add here this last part. So actually it would have been great to have these, both of these on two separate layers, but we can still do that. So select and transform. And now what I want to do here is I want to place this one further back since it's actually turning to the other side. So it, if this one moves f uh, to the front, this one moves to the back and that's totally fine. Now I can duplicate this layer again, move the next into the new group. So that's the next frame. And now we're going to go the other direction. So if you need a little bit help in visualizing that we're going here in this direction and this one will come forward um, and will be hidden somewhere inside here. So that's kind of like how we go about this. So I am just hiding both of these lines again. And so I'm taking up here the selection tool and then moving this one back just a tiny bit and higher up, maybe not too high up, actually a little bit lower because it's going down. And this one here, this one will come forward. So it will move further here and closer to this side. And I'm not erasing everything. I'm just trying to place these beforehand to get those right. And 
duplicating that one again here, placing it into the next group, doing the selection again, and you can see you're repeating movements a lot. And that's a great thing about animation is really to get the hang of things. You are learning how to place and move things pretty quickly, which is really cool. And here, this one will also move. It will go down and will come here pretty much closer to this side. And then I'm duplicating this one more time. We're going to do the cleanup at the end. So here, probably one more frame. Here, it's almost hidden. And then this one will also be almost hidden, maybe just like that. And here we go. So here it rotates out and that looks great. So now if I play that back, let's play it back. One, two, that looks great. I just need to clean up everything else and that will help me to get everything beautiful and proper. So here I can, for example, start by adding a couple of lines. So here it comes a little bit forward and it also comes a little bit forward here. So I'm not going to add too much, just a little bit, giving a hint that they're all together. And then here it will be in the back, so that's fine. I'm just erasing the first lines here. Ooh, also making sure that this is no longer assisted because they're no longer just symmetrical like that. So that's fine here. I can just give a little hint of a line, not too much. And then on the next one here, that's where I'm starting to erase the right parts, so just like that. And here, I'll definitely need to start erasing these parts because this is where the handle will go over like that. Just giving a little idea. Uh, I also erased some other parts, which was not necessary. So let's turn off the assist again and let's erase just this part here, this part there. And on the top, I'm just going to erase here and bottom here. And so just going to the next one, repeating this, erasing these parts that are now behind the teapot. And on the other one, I'm actually putting these together. Uh, so this is great. This will look a little bit more like that here. And then finally here, turn off the assist and start to erase those inner parts. And then finally, once we have all of these elements here, final one, erasing all of this. And then inside here, I'm also going to erase most of that. Turning off the drawing assist. See, we're getting a little bit of repetition here. And this is where I'm just adding a couple of lines and here in the next one, here in the next one, I'm just hinting that there was a line in between, but nothing more. And just turning off the drawing assist, erasing here, these two parts like that. And so now let's play back. That looks great. And this is our teacup to teapot animation going from one end to the other. So those are the steps that you need to take to create this. And it will look and should look something just like this here. So going up, going down, going up and going down. Now, of course, you can add a lot of extra effects. Not only that, you can add, for example, a tea bag to your cup that just will go and be pushed around. You can also add a teacup logo. You can add an entire background that it's going from one cafe to another or like and changing entire scenes. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be a teapot, but it can also be from tea to coffee and having like two different rooms. Like one is more of an English tea room. The other one is more of a coffee shop. Uh, you can also add whipped cream, but you can also just take everything further by making it loop around differently like I did. And so in my version that I have created, um, I have created this version here so we can look at the different elements that I've created. So first up here, there is this little tea bag um, element here. So with the cup, what it'll do is I've added this as a separate layer like here and once it moves around, it's kind of like that's the anticipation move. And then 
the teacup will rotate. So here it will rotate. You'll see this just changes direction. And what I did is really just move that around into a different direction. So here it moves into the next direction. And so I anticipate the movement, how it will move around, and then it moves to the next one, next one, and then it's behind everything and it comes around. I've added a lid for the teapot that lands down as well. So it comes down fast. It lands down here and I actually started from this position at the end where I just returned, moved it up a tiny little bit and more and more and more. And so kind of adding all these steps as we go. But as we learned beforehand, I started with just this here, this rim, and I moved it up and down. And afterwards I added the shape and then I added the spout and those sides and I kept on adding and adding and adding. And then when I was here, I was like, well, why don't we keep on going? Like just moving the entire object now. And so I started adding a little rotation and then movement that goes up like this and the water wasn't added until that point. So it comes up and then the water is added. And so that's one. And also just the cup is being added into the frame again. And I also started from this position, moving it out slowly, just the same way by doing a direction line, adding the steps in between and everything just like that. And so that's something that you can do and play around with as well, just to have that all around. And now it can loop endlessly, which is really cool. Um, and so that's something that I really, really enjoy. Now, what I really wanted to show you is those are just two examples that you can do, but I have a ton of students who have created so many great things. And so here are just a couple of these student examples. So one here is Timothy. Timothy has created like a beautiful shadow that looks absolutely amazing. The cup looks amazing. It's styled pretty beautifully. And you can see kind of like the two shapes of those cups look so different, which is really cool. We have Tara who created a uh, central perk to Monk's Coffee, uh, two different TV shows and just a beautiful switch with the background even that switches and the logo and even the whipped cream which is absolutely fantastic. Even just like three um, sessions she already created this. Here's Katya. Katya could probably have done this for uh, Starbucks. It really looks and feels like Starbucks which is really cool. Showcasing kind of like the different type sizes of cups that you have. And then we have Benoit who is also with us here. Benoit has created this beautiful coffee to tea cup uh, separation which is really really cool. So these are just a couple examples that were created during this six week boot camp. And a question that I've been receiving a lot lately is when is the next boot camp? And the next boot camp is coming soon. So before the year end, I am going to run another boot camp. I don't know exactly when, but you can go to my website, animation.stefankunz.com. That's where you can sign up for the waitlist and we'll send out emails to that waitlist. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this live stream. And if you have any suggestions for any other live stream, I'd love to hear about it. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you in the next.